There's a civil war brewing in the data engineering community. On the one hand, you have pipeline-focused engineers who work with Python and Spark and look down on the SQL people who do a lot of the data modeling. And then there's the ones who are focused on the data side who say that pipelines are basically a solved problem with tools that simplify it. So which side is the true data engineer? For some context, here's a few examples. I feel sometimes like this sub is a bit of a dbt snowflake SQL lovin'. Nothing wrong with that stack or skill set, but I thought that stuff was more for analytics engineers. I made a video recently about the roles I think make up a data team. Analytics engineers were one of them, but that's kind of an ideal situation. In reality, analytics engineers aren't a very common job title, and in the vast majority of companies, data engineers perform that role. So reading this comment makes me think it's someone who hasn't spent a lot of time on actual jobs. I, and people like me, try to neatly define titles to help provide clarity for roles, but companies don't really care what the internet thinks, and they'll do whatever titles they want. Each has their place in the business, but I do definitely see them as distinct skill sets that will have pay disparities. Whilst there is a hype this year to move back to SQL for everything approach, it just won't last, because the people you hire just to do SQL generally fall at the first hurdle of anything vaguely complex. Ugh. For starters, people have been using SQL to solve complex data problems for decades. It's not the ideal tool for every situation, but nothing is. And having that kind of attitude is just not good. It's usually assumed that coding equals money, and it's true that statistically jobs that sit closer to engineering departments will pay more on average. But that doesn't mean Python pays more than SQL. It's been interesting that the last couple times I was job searching, I usually discuss a variety of roles. Spark and Python focused, data warehousing, data tools, and Power BI and reporting. And while I've considered Spark and Python roles to be the most technically complex, they've consistently been the lower paying ones. And while I think most people consider reporting to be the more boring thing, they were often offering as much or more than architect positions. Why? because reporting is the most essential output of data teams, and most people's reporting is an absolute mess. I think I'm a bit of an outlier though, so don't expect every Power BI dev to be making more. I think it was a case of getting somebody with an architect skill set to come fix a big problem, more of a manager leadership type role, but there's absolutely demand for high-level analysts if that's what you're interested in. My entire data engineering job is on the ingestion data standardization side, using Python to write bespoke pipelines and loaders. All this work just dealing with modeling and SQL sounds kind of boring, honestly. And conversely, we have, I've always found the opposite to be true. Most of the guys on my team have a pretty limited understanding of analytics engineering side of things and consider that to be the more complex work. Of course, most of us coming from a pure software engineering background. This is really what it comes down to. There are technical problems that can be solved with code, and there are business problems that can be solved with discussions and planning. They both have their own style of complexity. But some people in the software world think that if a solution to a problem is technical, that's skilled work. And if a solution isn't technical, that's unskilled work that anybody can do. Don't be one of those people. I feel like this divide is a really big problem for people's careers. In my experience, most data projects kind of break down like this. The start is a lot of the understanding the business need. What are the data sources? Where's the data going? Is this for reporting or machine learning? Next, there's a lot of infrastructure work. Set up the data lake, the warehouse, the pipeline infrastructure. Then there's the initial pipeline work to get the data flowing. There will be ongoing maintenance and additional data to be piped in, but patterns will reduce the future workload. Now there's a lot of cycles of data modeling, building reports and models, understanding the data better, and going back and remodeling. And then there's tons and tons of reporting and machine learning work. To throw out some gut feeling numbers on it, I'd say in a data project, about 20% is pipeline work, 10% is infrastructure, 30% is modeling and transformation, and 40% is reporting or machine learning. So if you're looking to make a career in data and you only want to take part in the 20% pipeline or the 30% analytics engineering, you're probably limiting your growth. Most small to medium-sized companies are going to need people to help out across multiple roles. After the initial pipeline patterns are designed, there will be maintenance and improvements, but most of the work will be in understanding the data and transforming it. So you'll probably be expected to help out there. 
Even if you're in a large company with well-defined teams and enough work to focus on a single aspect, you still want to learn about the complete project picture. PMs, architects, principals, managers, leadership, they're all going to be expected to understand the big picture. So refusing to learn pipelines because they're a solved problem or refusing to learn data modeling in SQL because it's beneath you are fatal career mistakes. If you are interested in learning the bigger picture on what roles create a modern data team, be sure to watch this video next, where I break down all the skills needed for a data project.